Hello and welcome to A, a Couple, Couple Codes. Codes. My name is Cody. And my name is Emily. And we've been coding with the Odin Project for the past 28 weeks. And it's been a great week. Yesterday we went to our second tech meetup and we had a good time. Yeah, just like to say thanks to the people that organized it and love the pizza. <laughs> yeah. So Cody, how did your week go with programming? Pretty good, yeah. As usual, I'm working on the final JavaScript project and I'm making my way through that data structures and algorithm strategy. What did you work on for your final JavaScript project this week? So I've been working on the editing feature for the lexicon. So it's a window that appears off to the side when you click the edit button. And I had that working for attributes, but now I wanna get it working for references of those attributes. So there's the main table, which is the attributes table. Mm -hmm. It has expanded rows that allows for you to see references. I've made those references selectable and I'm building out the feature to essentially do the same thing of editing that you can do with attributes, but for references. Why did you choose to have a side window pop up for editing? That's what I thought would be fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, there was that or um, having it show up in the middle, um, but I thought the side window looked fine. Uh, I'm not, that's not like the final decision, oh, okay. but uh, it's, it's just like the first thing that came to mind so I went with it. Um, everything fits in the form kind of thing there. The side window also only sh like covers up part of the screen so then it grays out the rest of it. Mm. So you can still see that you're working in the dashboard and you haven't gone to a new page. So I don't uh. want it to be making it seem like you're going to a new page. So I you could also do that with a modal kind of thing with like in the center of the page, yeah. which that, that's the other option that I was thinking of. But I thought the like putting it off the side was easier than doing it directly in the middle and having it be like the same for references and attributes like it's just a big white column right now mm -hmm. as opposed to a dynamic blank square or something like that that will change depending on how many inputs you have so okay did you have any big challenges with that project this week i think the first stumbling block with it was i have editing for attributes and i'm actually using two tables for the attributes and then for the references but i was using i started off using just a single state to monitor whether attributes or or references were selected. Okay. So I didn't want them to be able to edit an attribute and a reference at the same time. Because oh. I, I figured that would probably cause a bug or something like that. So I was trying to manage the, the same state. But I, I decided to actually create two separate systems for that because that was a bit wonky. And then the specific thing that prevented me from doing that was you could then select an attribute and a reference at the same time. And I was trying to make it so that the same like editing box would appear so it'd be like attribute selected edit or if it was a reference it'd be reference selected edit but, okay uh if because you have two things going on at the same time now and they're two separate tables they won't like uncheck the other table like it's not capable of doing that with the kind of options in the library that i'm using so that's that's why i'm kind of making two systems for doing two separate buttons so there's an edit button at the top of the attribute table and then there's an edit button at the top of the references table it'll appear when you select a row from either table. Okay, so. cool. Is there anything significant that you've learned this week? Say at the meetup, I was learning a little bit more about the local tech scene, uh, just getting an understanding of uh, kind of the history of the meetup that we were, went to, and then also getting an understanding of like companies that are local that someone in tech could work for. Um, so I asked some pretty general questions about those two things and got a lot of answers, uh, especially for the tech jobs kind of thing. Uh, it seems like a lot of people do work remotely but there are some companies that have tech departments and um there is one or two like larger like companies that have larger like department for web development specifically because they're an online based store so mm, yeah but yeah that was that was interesting just to learn about get some information about the local tech environment kind of considering like jobs down the line mm -hmm. so. cool how about you what's been going on with your week well, I finished my CV app. I started and finished it this week. Uh, so this was a project where you basically create a form where someone can fill in their contact information, their education and employment history and submit it. And then it formats all the information in a CV. And the purpose was to practice state and props with React. And at this point, we are just focusing on class components, which it seems like most people use functional components now, but 
but uh, the reason why the Odin Project recommends getting familiar with class components is that you'll probably encounter them regardless um, if you're working with other people's code. So now that I've finished that project, I'm learning about life cycle methods, and then I think we're moving on to just focusing on functional components. Have you had any big challenges this week? I guess the biggest challenge I faced was when I started my CV app project. I I was excited and I think I was doing too many things at once. I was also copy and pasting code over from the task app that I made and everything got too complicated. So I just had to, I just scrapped it all and started over and that helped. Then I was able to write it actually pretty quickly. So I would say that was the biggest challenge. Yeah, copy and pasting code can yeah. <laughs> uh, convenient sometimes, but inconvenient more so than not. Because then you also don't get an understanding of what's going on with it. Especially mm -hmm. if, it, if it is broken when you use it, then it's like, all right, now I have to kind of play around with this to get an understanding of why the code doesn't work. Uh, yeah, if it doesn't work, then that's especially... You're essentially creating new problems for yeah. yourself that you didn't necessarily need to have in the first place. Yeah. It's not it's not a bad thing. To play. I mean, I've done a lot and that kind of stuff, but definitely after doing it so many times and running into that kind of problem mm -hmm. like it does seem better to try to do it yourself unless it's like a unless you're using like a library where they have a way of interacting with it because you are kind of copying code with the library um like with their examples and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but a little stack overflow piece <laughs> snippet here and a, yeah <laughs> a google like we w3 schools snippet there and that kind of yeah, mm -hmm. yeah i get that so did you have anything significant that you learned this week the most significant thing was just practicing creating class components with my React project. Just putting it into action and making something more complicated than that little task app that I made. So with those class components, is that where you use like super? Yeah, you have a... Super is... That was like such a weird <laughs> thing. You have a constructor function that you pass props into. And then within that, you have super that you pass props into. And no, no one really explains that well what it means. Like I was looking at the React documentation for it and even then it's just weird <laughs> don't you need the super to pass like to say that props are coming through like is don't you give that as an argument within super and then yeah it is it is an argument within super i think it has to do with binding this yeah it, that is definitely what it has to do with things. but yeah but, but you, it's so you, weird it's such a strange little thing up there it's just like this little <laughs> super but i think you only need to use it when you're setting state in the constructor because yeah like if i just put the if I just have the constructor and super in my component, but I'm not setting state, then ESLint will throw a little warning and say it's a useless constructor. So yeah, so yes, yeah, so that's class component. And then you have the variety of lifecycle methods that you can only call in class components. And then you have the render function mm -hmm. at the end. Yeah. Well, that's all we have for this week. If you like our updates, be sure to hit that like button. And if you'd like to continue following along on our our web dev journey be sure to hit the subscribe button we do a video every friday where we have a conversation about our week and then we also post individual vlogs every other day throughout the week thanks for tuning into a, a couple, couple codes, codes.